Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, we are from Dr. Uncle and welcome to the live Q&A session with us. It's a weekly webinar. Today we have our guest consultant. Uh, he is Dr. Tunku Ahmad Hidayat Tunku Aziz. He is a physician and a clinical hematologist who practices now at Thompson Hospital. We would like to welcome you, Doctor. Thank you. How are you today? I'm fine. Nice bucket shirt. Thank you. <laughs> I understand that you like to wear bucket shirt. Yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah, okay. And so, <laughs> how are you feeling? I'm feeling yeah. excited to give this talk. Excited today. to share yeah. later on. So, our topic today is understanding lymphoma. So, lymphoma is one of the blood uh, cancers, yeah, doctor? Yes. And um, typically, we hear about lymphoma, leukemia, and also myeloma. And uh, Dr. Kumpi Hidayat, your specialty is mostly in uh, lymphoma? Okay, my specialty, I'm a clinical hematologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Malaysia, uh, clinical hematologist uh, mainly deals with all blood disorders, but our uh, about of our diseases that we handle are blood cancers. So the most common one is lymphoma, followed by leukemia and uh, myeloma. So what I'm doing today is we focus on one type of blood cancer, which is lymphoma. Okay. Yeah, I hope you can learn from this. All right. Yeah. So uh, for the audience that is your first time, we welcome you again. Uh, for the returning audience, uh, we appreciate your uh, loyalty and uh, we hope you enjoyed this session today. So without further ado, let's uh, welcome Dr. Tengku Hidayat to present his slides okay. on lymphoma. Thank you. Okay. So um, today, okay, good. Afternoon, good evening, everyone. So I'll be talking about lymphoma and understand that we are limited time. So I'll try to be as brief and as concise as possible. And uh, you can ask the questions later to further for further clarification. So today we're talking about lymphoma. Lymphoma involves the lymphatic system. So if you look in this slide here, uh, this is our lymphatic system. It's everywhere in our body. Uh, so uh, any uh, in the basana, you call it kelenjar, uh, but kelenjar, um, this one is kelenjar. In Indonesian, they call it getah bening. Uh, Chinese, we call it um, uh, limpa. So it's a lymphatic system. All the system um, in lymphoma can be affected and uh, be cancerous. And uh, the most common, two common types of lymphoma that we hear are Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. There's a, uh, actually a big difference between these two, but still a cancer of the lymph node, uh, the white cell in the lymph nodes. And this is how we differentiate. This is very microscopic and, uh, um, and uh, it's not something that you can see based on the CT scan, based on your uh, naked eye. It has to be seen under the, uh, the microscope. This is how the doctors decide what types of lymphoma uh, can say this. So in Hodgkin lymphoma, generally we look at, uh, mainly there's a, uh, not many types, but in non-Hodgkin lymphoma, there are a lot of types, subtypes. So this makes the diagnosis more challenging and also gives a different modality of treatment, options of modality of treatment. And uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, as I mentioned, the classical, there's uh, five types. So there's the classical uh, types, which are four of them, and one type of uh, nodular lymphocyte predominant. This seems like a lot of jargon here, but uh, just bear with me because this is how uh, blood cancer and lymphoma is. And uh, in non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, there are many types. These are the most common ones. The more common ones being uh, the DLBCL and follicular lymphoma. And uh, I will tell you which, one, which types are the more aggressive one and intolerant ones. So you can see the most common one is uh, DLBCL followed, followed by follicular lymphoma, yeah? And uh, in, in Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, there are uh, the, the, the uh, incidence of cases, prevalence and incidence of cases is more, is common in both, both genders, but you can see there's a bimodal peak. It happens both at the younger group of age as well as the, as the uh, older group of age. It affects males a bit more, but this is where uh, the, the uh, is commonly diagnosed in young adults, also at the uh, extreme uh, end of the age, uh, which is the elderly. And uh, for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, it's a bit uh, more complicated. 
some like BL, BCL are more common in the elderly age, 64%. Uh, some like the mediastinal lymphoma are more common in the younger group. But most of it are more common in the older age group. Uh, this also poses uh, to be challenging treatment because uh, of age and also uh, patients may be having other types of disease. And um, uh, there's, there's actually quite um, a general spread of the disease. I mean, equal spread between male and female. So there's no uh, sexual predependence uh, about, about this disease. And non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, how I classify it would be there are two types. Uh, they, 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 you can classify B cell versus T cell or classify it as aggressive versus indolent. Yeah. So um, we have, the, I will talk about the more common ones. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma, the, uh, which is uh, the most common, is slightly aggressive. And follicular lymphoma is indolent. Indolent meaning slow growing. Uh, it may come undetected. Uh, you may think it's a normal love for many years. So those, this is how we, we differentiate. Aggressive may come within a few months. It may go big. And then we have one called uh, Burkitt's lymphoma, which is very aggressive, very difficult to treat. And also a, a more complicated one, it can be aggressive and indolent, metal cell lymphoma. So uh, these are the subtypes in the B cell lymphomas alone. So um, here's an example of Burkitt's lymphoma. It can come in with a very big mass, compressing your esophagus, compressing your airway. So uh, this is how aggressive a Burkitt's lymphoma can be. And uh, T cell is not too common. Uh, these are the more common uh, T cell lymphomas. Uh, the pairing PTCL, ALCL. So more jargon. Sorry, uh, I apologize for that. And NK T cell lymphoma. And uh, the the this is the NK T cell lymphoma. It may uh, uh, affect your your non lymph organ. Basically, even though it's not a lymph node, but it can impact. Your, your mouth, which is a non-lymphoid uh, organ. So you can actually destroy the, the, the normal oral cavity and even impact the nasal cavity. So it can be a very devastating disease. Yeah? Okay, now we go to the signs and symptoms of lymphoma. So you have this uh, condition called lymphadenopathy, basically lymph node enlargement. So in areas that I mentioned earlier, uh, you may have areas of lymph node that's enlarged. So it can be in the neck, can be in the axilla, can be in the groin. Uh, but there are sometimes the undetectable lymph node enlargement, uh, which uh, sometimes we can only find from scans. So these, those are the intra-abdominal and uh, uh, lymph nodes and as well as lymph nodes inside the chest wall. These are mainly undetected. Okay. So uh, this also may cause it uh, difficult to diagnose this disease because some lymph nodes are not detected clinically and or by the uh, by our patient. It has to be uh, scanned. And other common symptoms are fever, unexplained fever mainly. It's not uh, treated by antibiotics. Prolonged fever, so you may uh, get this unexplained fever. And pruritus means basically uh, generalized itchiness of the uh, body, and so you may have this unexplained itchiness as well as some uh, may arrive very late where you have uh, weight loss. This is common in most cancers where you have this condition called cachexia, uh, where you have a uh, loss of weight, a significant loss of weight, uh, unexplained loss of weight. Uh, in a matter of six months, you may lose this much. So the other, uh, other uh, symptom is actually an, uh, swelling in your abdomen, which could be caused by the uh, enlargement of the spleen. So we call it splenomegaly. So because spleen is also a lymphoid organ, it's a normal immune uh, organ. So the lymph nodes can, the lymphoid, the white cell can be there. So those cells also can be cancerous. So the spleen also can be enlarged. Yep. And the other common symptoms are anemia, basically uh, uh, low uh, Hb hemoglobin. You can have anemia in uh, in lymphoma, but sometimes you may have lymphoma with absolutely normal counts because. Uh, anemia, uh, lymphoma is not diagnosed from the full blood count, it's diagnosed by uh, examining the lymph nodes. Yeah? Uh, okay, so investigation is lymphoma, blood tests, yes, as, as I said, you may detect anemia, but some blood tests may appear normal. Uh, biopsy is the most important investigation in uh, lymphoma, 
and there's a CT and all PET CT scan, which uh, stages the lymphoma and the bone marrow aspiration, basically uh, um, uh, biopsy of the bone marrow uh, and uh, also cytogenetics test. Because these are all important in diagnosing as well as staging and prognostication uh, of the disease. Yeah? And blood test is the, uh, we look at the full blood count, we look at the, the kidney function, we look at the liver function. Those are the basic uh, screening that we do for blood tests. But we also may do HIV and Hep B and Hep C tests because those diseases are related to lymphoma. Okay, biopsy is the most important because uh, you cannot diagnose lymphoma from a CT scan. You cannot diagnose lymphoma from a clinical uh, uh, test. It has to be biopsy. The best is an excisional biopsy where you excise the lymph nodes, look at it under the microscope and differentiate the type of the lymphoma. Because we, as you, I uh, explained earlier, there are many types and subtypes of lymphoma and the treatment is specific to uh, each type. Okay, so now the next is uh, CT scan. This is PET CT. You can see here the involvement of the many uh, organs that light up in the, in the scan. So this is the type of lymphoma, which is, uh, you can see here, it's in the neck, it's in the, uh, in the bowels, it's in the inguinal. So it's, it's already spread everywhere. This is, this is how we stage, uh, how we detect lymphoma uh, in the whole body. Yeah. So it's important in staging and prognostication. So how we stage lymphoma, uh, they call it this NR4 staging, uh, or uh, Lugano classification of staging. It's stage three, stage one to stage four, where we use the uh, patient's diaphragm to differentiate. Stage one will be one side of the diaphragm here. Stage two will be two areas, but uh, more than uh, one area, but still at the same side of the diaphragm. Stage three will be two sides of the diaphragm, up and down. Stage four will be uh, non-distant uh, metastasis. For instance, it goes to the bone marrow. This is the reason that why we need to a bone marrow test because uh, once it reaches the bone marrow, it already is already considered as stage four. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is the bone marrow. This is the bone marrow test uh, which we do. Uh, it looks painful, uh, but I assure you. Uh, most patients go through this, they may even just, uh, it can be a daycare procedure, they come in at the morning and after the procedure they lie down for a while, they uh, can go back and uh, by 4 p.m. In, uh, in the afternoon. So it looks horrible but it's not really horrible, it's, uh, it's a safe procedure. Yeah. So it's important but a lot of patients are, are not keen because by looking at this picture they are they're scared to do the bone marrow. But it's a common procedure for us in the yeah, so one in the area of uh, modern uh, era of, of, of treatment, cytogenetics is important because it can give us the prognostication, but also the abnormalities in the cytogenetics uh, and also molecular abnormalities will give us the chance to target it uh, in, a, in, in, to target it in, in treatment. Okay, so treatment options, there are multiple. There's chemotherapy. There's radiotherapy, there's immunotherapy, there's targeted therapies, and there's also bone marrow transplant uh, uh, as an option for treatment. Yeah. So chemotherapy, whatever the bad plaque that chemotherapy uh, receives, it's still the backbone of the treatment. It uh, sometimes is it's always it can be used alone, but it's used in combination with other treatment modalities. So our role as a hematologist is to decide the dose, decide the timing, monitor the, 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 the side effects of the treatment. So uh, uh, that's how we are uh, trained, what are we are trained to do is to give chemotherapy but also limiting the toxicity of chemotherapy. Yeah? So the next treatment is immunotherapy. Uh, we use antibodies. Okay, There's a many, many uh, types of uh, immunotherapy. Sorry. Uh, monoclonal antibody, immunomodulators, and CAR T. So the most common one is called rituximab. This one is a breakthrough medicine where it uses the, it's a combination of mice, uh, chimeric uh, of between uh, mouse and human antibody where it, uh, it catches the, the cancer cells and present uh, and make it and prime it for target by the, your own immune system. So you get cell death 
by this uh, uh, immunotherapy. So all the principles of immunotherapy is actually using, uh, utilize, uh, priming the cancer cell for attack by your own immune system. But sometimes some immunotherapy may cause direct toxicity to the cancer cell as well. So there are many, many uh, uh, ways that it can kill all the cancer cells. So there are many types uh, of uh, immunotherapy. Yeah. So uh, this this one is the most late, this is the latest one. CAR T therapy where you your your T cells are cultured. It sounds like a science, a science fiction, but it's not science fiction. Where they use a virus to insert. Uh, an agent inside the T cells uh, receptor and uh, T cell to produce this uh, specific uh, T cells which attacks the the cancer and um, it, this is uh, oh, this is uh, uh, the latest in um, treatment modality in in blood cancers including lymphoma. Yep, targeted therapies. It targets in your is more jagged and more nerd science stuff here, but you see there's a lot of targets in the molecular targets uh, that, that can be used uh, to to uh, they can be used as a target for treatment. So uh, there are a lot of options treatment. Then there is also still a role for radiotherapy, uh, mainly for focal disease. You cannot use it for widespread disease because you cannot be shooting the the, the radiotherapy beam everywhere in the body. But it has its uh, uses in those diseases that are uh, focal, or those sometimes very uh, stubborn diseases that remain in the uh, system despite chemotherapy. So uh, bone marrow, there is two types. Autologous means self allogenic from others. Uh, this is sort of a reboot where you use your own stem cell to reboot your system. Uh, you uh, it's complicated a bit that you give a chemotherapy first uh, to kill off the cancer. But uh, it, uh, but because of the side effect, it uh, can uh, harm the bone marrow. We store the your bone marrow first in a safe place, and when the time comes, we infuse the bone marrow to reboot the system after we have given the the chemotherapy. Okay, so allogenic is from others. It has limited benefits in lymphoma, so we do not really give <coughs> allogenic transplant in in uh, lymphoma. We mainly focus on uh, autologous. So lymphoma. What is this? Okay. Um, okay, so, so prognosis depends on staging and prognosis uh, factors. So there's a lot of factors: age, gender, functional status, meaning how good are you? Are you bedridden? Are you still active, able to perform daily activities? Those are very important. Uh, giving a chemo to a bedridden patient has uh, certainly not as good uh, outcome as those patients who are still active and still strong. So staging and social prognostic markers, biochemical markers molecular tests, cytogenetic tests, those are prognostic markers. So, for instance, I can, uh, uh, we have a scoring system for Hodgkin lymphoma, where uh, uh, the, the lower the score, the better is your five years, uh, or five year uh, progression free survival and five year overall survival. So you can see those who has a low score has better survival rate. Those who have a higher score means this, uh, this, this prognostication factors will have a lower chance of survival. Um, uh, but this is just prognostication, meaning all this prognostic, prognostication is to give you to, to, to deal with the expectation, but we still give treatment despite how poor the prognosis is, provided the patient is fit enough and uh, provided the patient is agreeable for treatment. So despite hearing a 40%, 50, uh, 50 survival rate, we give the treatment in the hope to improve the odds of the patient to be in those lucky 50% of those patients who survive. Yep. So, uh, pronos staging pronostication is mainly to uh, manage out both the doctors and the, the patient's expectation. Yeah. And yes. pronostication. So, take home message, lymphoma is not just a one type of disease. There's a, it's a diverse group of cancer. And you can see a lot of investigations are required. Uh, but also, there are many options of treatment. Uh, and outcomes are very vari uh, vari uh, variable. So you discuss with your hematologist uh, what are your uh, what the disease in detail, and um, we would give you the 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 the, the, re the reality of the, uh, the the situation. But also will will support you throughout the treatment. Whether even if you choose to go for treatment or not go for treatment, we will support your decision and support you all the way. Yeah. So.
Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. At the end of your slide? Yes, yeah. the end of the slide. So you, you shared quite a bit in brief. Um, we, we were able to learn a little bit about the types of lymphoma. Uh, doctors also shared the signs and the symptoms of one that has uh, yeah. infected with lymphoma. Yeah. And uh, another thing, uh, you also shared quite a bit of, about the treatment options as well as the investigations yes. that can be done on one person that has a lymphoma. Okay, so um, not not sure if everyone's aware, but this month, September, is the World Health, uh, World Lymphoma Awareness Month. So in conjunction with that, that's where we invited Dr. Hidayat to uh, join us today. Uh, we're going to go on a short break um, before we get to the Q&A session with everyone. Please um, forward us your questions and then we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. All right. Thank you. We live in a world where more people are connected than ever before. Technology has forever changed the way we connect with people to work, learn and live. So in today's world, when the inevitable happens and you or a loved one gets sick, you should be able to connect with a doctor immediately to get the medical care and treatment you need. But more often than not, seeing a doctor for a common condition or a prescription refill can be time-consuming, inconvenient and costly. Imagine being able to connect with a doctor within minutes. Imagine being able to talk to a doctor while at work, at home or on the go. Discover an easy and effective way to get the medical care you need. Discover Doctor On Call, a better way to get the care you need. With Doctor On Call, you can talk to our experienced and caring doctors via video, phone, or text message whenever and wherever you are. Doctor On Call doctors are highly qualified and board certified. Our doctors will listen carefully, answer your questions, and address your concerns. We will understand your medical history, symptoms, and conditions. If medication is required, our doctors will write a prescription and advise you accordingly. We are connected seamlessly to a network of pharmacies nationwide to provide you with the prescribed medications without compromising safety and quality. You can choose to have your medication delivered straight to your doorstep so you can spend more time recovering and getting on with your day. No waiting in lines, no appointment required, just quality medical care without ever leaving your home or office. So the next time you're feeling unwell, remember you have a doctor on call. A better way to get the care you need. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that commercial break. Uh, we're back with Dr. Yeah. Dr. Tengku Hidayat, yeah? yeah? Okay, so uh, we have some questions here that came in from the audience, uh, okay? So the number one question, or the question number one, uh, what do you mean in your slide uh, by staging, and uh, why is it important? Okay. In case uh, some of you have missed the slide, so staging in lymphoma, we use a staging called Ann Arbor or Lugano, Lugano classification. So um, it's well, we use the diaphragm, as a demarcator, uh, diaphragm is where the abdomen and the chest is. Uh, this is a tissue layer where it splits the abdomen and the chest. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's if it's one area, whether it's down or up, uh, we call it stage one. If it's uh, two more than one area, but still within the same site, stage two. Both sites, stage three, and if it's distant, stage four. So this is important because if it's earlier stage, uh, it may decide whether you what kind of treatment you do. Because if it's just localized, you do not want to go for chemotherapy. Uh, so you may uh, benefit from uh, localized treatment like radiotherapy. And uh, But some, uh, funnily enough, some types of uh, uh, lymphoma, it, for earlier stage, you treat. Because the, um, there's benefit in uh, treating the earlier stage. But uh, and some, but in the advanced stage, because the, the benefit of treatment does not outweigh the risk, Sometimes we do not even treat the stage four slow growing lymphoma, where uh, watchful waiting or observation um, uh, is, is the way to go. 
and we only start to treat when it causes symptoms. So that's how important staging is in lymphoma. I see. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Uh, so the next question uh, we have here is which type of lymphoma has good prognosis? Are the Hodgkin's or the non -Hodgkin? Classically, um, uh, when I was a student, this was more. Uh, I don't want to tell my age, lah. So many years ago. Uh, uh, the lymphoma, uh, my lecturer used to say Hodgkin, good, non Hodgkin because there's no there, no good. Uh, but there was the old, uh, there, there was before all these subtypes of lymphoma. Um, some uh, lymph, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma was thought to be better prognosis, but it has been evident that Hodgkin lymphoma ha uh, has the subtypes uh, refractory to treatment. And uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Uh, was thought to be uh, difficult to treat, but due to this new model T treatment, the outcomes of treatment is better. So uh, it's not so easy to say uh, which has better prognosis, but both have different uh, modality of treatment. The chemo for uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is totally different to the chemo to the uh, for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and uh, the the other uh, therapies that that's available, they have different type of immunotherapy, they have different type of targeted therapy. Yeah, so that's how important it is to 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 be to to know what type of uh, subtype. But none, uh, I would say, uh, you cannot say that one has better outcome than the other. Yeah, because um, some, uh, but of course, in Hodgkin lymphoma, it's more common in young age. Um, they do better with chemotherapy. If you can see in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma, older age, so more, uh, you, do, uh, you are older, you have more diseases, you have other comorbidities. That's why sometimes the outcomes are not good. So it's not due to the cancer alone, but also the post factor, which is the patient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So in regards to someone who would like to get the screening, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, uh, is it in, is it mandatory for them to go through the COVID nineteen test? Uh, uh, so the question. The COVID nineteen test is it mandatory to be done before you have a screening? Um. Yes. COVID. If you do it in in a hospital setting, yeah, you have to do a COVID because um. Um, I'm not too clear about this question, but um, of course, when you have uh, COVID-19 and you have malignancy, the outcomes are poor. But for screening tests, um, yeah. inpatient, yes. Um, and uh, as an inpatient in any hospital, uh, you need to do the, uh, the COVID-19 test. Yeah, because it uh, affects not only you, but also other healthcare personnel and also other patients in the ward as well. Okay, now we have this. Uh, what is the survival rate of B cell lymphoma? Okay, um, it depends on the staging. Uh, I'll put in. Um, I just put in a broad aspect. Uh, um, if you have earlier stage, you may have even like eighty percent survival rate. Um, some uh, where primary medicinal B cell lymphoma with a more intensive chemo, the survival rate is, may reach even more than ninety percent. Mm. So the uh, but some like um, Burkitt's lymphoma, very aggressive. The survival rate uh, is uh, very low, uh, less than 40%. Um, but some, even like the CNS lymphoma, where the lymphoma occurs in the brain, the median survival is only two years despite whatever you do. Um, and it's very variable. So you have to, that's why, it's, uh, as I answered, the staging and the type of the lymphoma is, uh, the subtype of the lymphoma is very important to know the survival rate. Okay. Uh, now we are covering uh, question number five. Uh, a question from the audience is, are my family members at risk of developing lymphoma? Family members, meaning if a patient has lymphoma, uh, are the, uh, I think maybe this is the question because mm -hmm. um, I do get these questions a lot. It's not passed down. Uh, when I say genetic abnormalities, it's basically there's an abnormality in genetics uh, which is triggered. Um, when a cancer happens, it's not just due to the genetic factors, there's the environmental factors. Mm -hmm. You do have patients who are exposed to certain chemicals, per se, but do not get cancer. Uh, and But you have those patients exposed to the same thing, uh, same uh, chemicals, they do get cancer. But you do not pass in genetic, you do not, for instance, you, a father does not pass it to the children if they have lymphoma, it's not inherited. So it's not like colon CA or breast CA, those uh, those are uh, cancers that are very hereditary, but not for uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Yeah, not for lymphoma in general. Sorry. Okay. Um, this is regarding the uh, treatment. Mm. Uh, will I lose my hair with treatment? Yes. Um, especially with chemotherapy, 
if you use chemotherapy, you can lose your hair. I know it's important. It's cosmetically very damaging, but also a lot, uh, a lot of patients uh, are very particular about losing hair. Uh, it's a temporary. Uh, you only lose hair during the treatment, but you regain uh, you regain hair growth afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, but some treatment like uh, like immunotherapy does not cause you to lose hair. Uh, yes, you can use immun immunotherapy alone, but most uh, treatment modalities are combined. Combining both chemotherapy and immunotherapy. So the next question is uh, regarding the dietary um, habits of okay. lymphoma patient. Uh, is there a, like uh, the, the question here is what should I eat or not eat okay. if I'm diagnosed with lymphoma? You should eat healthy food. Um, I know um, there are myths that say you shouldn't be eating sugar, you shouldn't be eating meat. Actually, in reality, also you shouldn't be eating sugar in a high amount. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, you take sugar as you need and, and, and protein as you need. Uh, everything moderation. But the most important di dietary advice for patients with can uh, blood cancer and uh, lymphoma, uh, and one of them, is the infection uh, control in diet. So all must be cooked food. You cannot be eating raw food. No sushi, no sambal blachan. Uh, no, no uh, raw salads. So even the the, the fruits must be uh, fruit, like the vegetables must be cooked. Mm. The fruits must be peeled and washed properly. So those are the the most important dietary advice. So healthy diet, you take a well balanced diet because yes, the cancer does take up the sugar and protein, but so does the patient. You need to be strong to fight the cancer. You cannot be uh, denying yourself of good nutrition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the next question is regarding the red meat. So you mentioned something about that. Is it true? Or no. Uh, but your red meat must be well done. Lah. So you have to uh, hold on to the medium rare steak until you're cured of, of uh, lymphoma. So everything will be well done. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, can you summarize the main symptoms I need to look out for lymphoma? The main symptoms are swelling, uh, lymph node swelling. But uh, as I said, usually you feel it in the neck, that's the most common area. But sometimes you may feel it in the axilla or groin area. Those are the, the most uh, commonly palpable areas. But um, for those lymphoma that doesn't have uh, palpable lymph nodes, uh, it's the, those, you may have that symptom I mentioned, weight loss, unexplained weight loss, fever, uh, uh, not caused by infection. Those are very, um, very uh, insidious uh, symptoms. So you need to be careful. If you lose weight, like 10% uh, of your normal weight in the space of six, uh, three months, uh, then there's something to be worried about because uh, unless you intend to lose that much weight, but if you do not intend to lose that much weight, but you lose that much weight, uh, it can be due to many diseases, but uh, cancer, including lymphoma, is one of them. Okay, we have the next question. Can I exercise while I am receiving... Chemotherapy. Yes, you can have light exercise, but uh, be careful if you have anemia uh, because some of the side effect of the uh, chemotherapy, uh, the collateral damage, temporary damage is to the, your normal cells, including your red cells. So if you're anemic, you may feel more tired, you may get dizzy. Don't exert yourself. You may have light exercises. Uh, it's good that you are motivated to live healthy life and not just be bedridden. Mm -hmm. um, so just moderate exercise, just to feel to sweat it out uh, uh, and and feel more active. But do not exert yourself because um, chemotherapy can be quite taxing for for some people. Okay. Um. This is something we did talk about this a little bit, but like, um, there was a question about the difference. What is the difference between lymphoma and leukemia? Okay, lymphoma is a disease of the lymph node where the white cell is developed in the lymph node. But there are, uh, lymph, but there are some types of lymphoma in, in my presentation here, like NK T cell lymphoma. It goes to the non lymph node organs, like in the oral cavity. Uh, and uh, it may this lymphoma may even be in the in the stomach or in the bowel. So uh, uh, then the next question is: um, leukemia is a disease of the white cell in the bone marrow mainly, which is circulates in the your blood system. So you may uh, you that's where the the, the leukemia cells uh, are, uh, uh, is affecting the bone marrow and in the, uh, the circulation. But lymph node lymphoma cells do not 
uh, in general uh, does not go to to the to the uh, bloodstream. There is a thing in aggressive lymphoma, a leukemic phase of lymphoma, but there's a subtype. It's all is very academic, so uh, let's not confuse too many people with that, lah. Okay, okay. but uh, in general, it doesn't affect the the blood circulation. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, see. Um, what kind of blood test can I do to detect lymphoma? Lymphoma, unfortunately, is most one of the blood cancers, uh, one of the cancers that cannot be detected on the blood test. Unless you have advanced disease causing problem, you may present with, uh, say, anemia uh, or even low white cell, low platelet, if the lymph node already affected the bone marrow. By then, it will be already at advanced stage. So, um, it's usually diagnosed by the biopsy. By then, you already have a, a detectable disease. So, um, there are blood tests, which is uh, biochemical markers, which are vague uh, cancer markers for prognostication, but there is no cancer marker for uh, lympho lymphoma, unfortunately. Yeah? Um, how, how long uh, would it take to develop from stage 1 to stage 2? Well, um, uh, it's not really easy to answer that, because some patients present with stage 1 early, uh, they, they are lucky. But some cancers, they are undetectable or some people choose to ignore the swelling. So if you choose to ignore a uh, swelling, uh, just say you feel a swelling in the neck, then you will feel okay. Because some cancers, lymphoma are indolent, slow growing. So it doesn't cause that much problem. But until you, you, you do a scan, then you discover it's already spread all over the body. So any suspicious swelling in the body, you, you, you have to investigate, uh, be it lymphoma or not lymphoma. Yep, so all cancers behave like that. Okay, we have one final question here. Yeah. This is, uh, is there any lifestyle changes that I should adopt to prevent this type of cancer? Um, of course, we talk about um, uh, avoiding processed foods uh, because we don't know chemicals, but uh, even my, me, myself, still take my fast food at times, okay. la, right? Yeah. No, at times, <laughs> uh, maybe quite often. Uh, uh, poor dietary habits, but I guess, um, but we can change the outcome of a person with a lymphoma. If you do not have, uh, if you're a healthy person and despite uh, that you still get lymphoma, but if you have a good functional status, uh, if you do get lymphoma, your outcome is better. It's, uh, it's if, you do, if you do not have any other comorbidities. Of course, I said good lifestyle changes, exercise, that, all that, all those are good. And of uh, some cancers, obesity, uh, 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 is related to cancers, so uh, yes, uh, but lymphoma is not really uh, one of them. But in general, obesity is related to cancers. So, uh, uh, if you avoid being obese, then of course, you, uh, there's a lower risk of you getting cancer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, doctor, okay, for welcome. answering all the questions from the audience. Uh, before we go, uh, I'd like to share with everyone that uh, we have. Um, packages for blood test investigation here. So we have a basic blood, executive blood screen. Okay, blood. This, these are all yeah. non-cancer. Non Basically, right. it's a general yeah. one. Yeah. But um, that's one uh, we have for this. But in general, okay, what's obvious is the price difference lah, between basic but blood. But these ones uh, are the one that's uh, offered here yeah. at Thompson yeah. Hospital under the health screen yeah. packages. So. It is a general way you check your thyroid, your renal function, right. function test, but um, it's just a basic, sorry, yeah? it's not too clear on the internet. Right. Uh, but we also check for your 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 cholesterol, sugar level, it's, it's, those are the normal screens. It's a preliminary. We do have an anemia screening package, I don't know whether they include it here or not. Mm -hmm. um, to detect anemia uh, in general, but uh, as I said earlier, uh, there are no cancer, blood cancer right. screening package, unlike those for for, for uh, colorectal cancer, breast cancer. Right. Yep. So, um, but this is just to yeah, you know you may detect share this with you, the audience. Yeah, I think uh, as we as we age okay. and we uh, we, uh, we have to be more concerned of our health. Sometimes it is from the screening where uh, the disease uh, detected. So one thing leads to another. So you may feel well, then you may have anemia or abnormal uh, function test. Um, then then you proceed with a scan. You find out something is wrong. So that's how those um, uh, very undetectable cancer gets detected is from screening packages. 
um, right. if you have uh, access to screening, whether your own uh, money or from a corporate screening, you yeah. can utilize it. Uh, you should, you okay, should. so uh, you know, for further questions about these packages, yeah, yeah uh, we can go to the next slide to uh, give a content information actually okay before that this is the telehealth consultation with dr philip my diet qr oh, it's, code it's yeah one. yeah so uh, everyone if uh, you have um the desire to get a consultation uh, with dr tempo my diet at thompson hospital please do uh, scan this qr code now and then you will be led to the uh, to his profile page at dr on call so you can go ahead and do that now and book your telehealth consultation slot um, with him. So um, to, to end this uh, session today, uh, here is the information uh, where you can contact us by email or our hotline. Uh, do contact us if you want to get in touch with uh, uh, us regarding the telehealth consultation. If you have any questions about today's session, uh, as well as the packages uh, for the blood test investigation, please do call us and also email us. Uh, we hope you had a good uh, session learning about lymphoma. We thank you again, okay, uh, Dr. Tempo Hidayat, for uh, your time. Uh, we truly appreciate it. And we hope to see you guys again in the next session with us next week. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day.